Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. This review covers the record-breaking Ram Chargers AA Fuel Front Engine Dragster. It's a 125 scale kit from MPC, number 940. The Ram Chargers were uh, an ad hoc group of, um, well, hot rodders who had worked for Chrysler uh, Engineering and they started in the late 50s um, and they had great results on the strip so Chrysler began to take them seriously and, and let them uh, have free reign with some of the designs. Now, this um, uh, kit was originally released in 1968 by MPC, and it's been re-released a number of times since then, including this uh, 2021 boxing. Now, listed as a number two skill, that might be a little uh, light. It may take a little bit more skill. I would rate it in the intermediate area. Now, the kit has a fragile chassis, and it might be better for advanced builders. Now, it also contains 79 parts molded in white, chrome, and clear, and it's a single uh, purpose build with some options for different decals. Now, it's got uh, pad printed Race Master M&H slicks, and when it's done, the car measures about 8 and 3 quarter inches long, 1 and 3 quarter inches high, and 2 and a quarter inches wide. Oh, that sounds like uh, Newt, uh, the program director back there, tapping on the glass. He's got a question. Uh, what's your question, Newt? I like the look of the front engine dragsters, but weren't they as dangerous as they were fast? Well, that's right, uh, Newt. They were indeed dangerous, and eventually the design was abandoned. Because with the clutch behind the engine and below the driver's feet, they could blow up under the tremendous torque of those engines and hit the driver's feet and legs with shrapnel. In the mid-60s, talk about fast, the, the Ram Chargers were hitting over 200 miles an hour at around seven and a half seconds in the quarter mile. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, there's a nice chrome tree and the parts were molded very nicely. Uh, I think they did a great job refurbishing these molds. And look at those huge m and slicks. Um, if you're going to put this together, generally, uh, you can use just a regular tube glue uh, to give it uh, some chance to uh, set up in line and make adjustments to the pieces. Um, also, we will be using some of the uh, white glue or clear glue for the uh, glass pieces. And remember to heed the manufacturer's use and safety guidelines when you're uh, using any of the products that you see or hear in the review. The decals for the kit, and as you can see, they're colorful and the register is good. Um, they actually respond well to uh, water, come off easily, but you may want to use some setting solution for those longer stripes and decals. One side note on the decal sheet here, you see the Goodyear uh, sponsor decals there. They uh, should not be used unless you make some changes uh, because it comes equipped with the uh, M&H Racemaster slicks. So either turn the uh, tires around or uh, resource it with some Goodyear slicks. So construction starts with the wheels. Uh, so you can see here that the, uh, the chrome spokes uh, are nicely done, but you need to scrape chrome from areas where you want to glue that together. It won't stick. Same thing with paint. Remember that throughout your build. So go ahead and assemble the wheels uh, together and they should be offset the one side the other side in between so that you can see from both sides. Now the tires then can be slipped right over the completed rims. Next you can grab the parts for the, um, the supercharger and the blower there uh, and get those ready to assemble. And then those are the basic uh, parts for the engine you see here and then the completed blower and the manifold uh, assembly. By the way, if you need some clarification for these pieces, um, go to the uh, back of the review where the instructions are for clarification. The, uh, the basic block engine uh, and uh, heads, etc., they were painted just a, a standard a medium red. Uh, in this case, you used one shot brand bright red L104. Uh, but it's any uh, basic red will do because this is not a factory color, it's just painted red. Now, uh, we as assembled the uh, the block and uh, etc. with the uh, chrome parts and the blower 
was painted to resemble magnesium and I made that with some flat black and silver mixed about 6040. So we'll use these parts to complete the engine and you also see here a um, wire distributor which I just made from uh, plastic stock and some small 30 gauge wire uh, right next to the distributor that we will not use from the kit. But that's to enhance the uh, model because the engine is exposed uh, when you can uh, open up the uh, top of the body. And so you can see the uh, uh, distributors mounted here and the wires are connected to the heads um, and of course we had to drill holes through the top of the plated uh, valve covers there because that's where the plugs are located on the Hemi. As you can see the engine is completed here except for the headers and they get installed after the engine is located in the chassis for alignment. Now the blower belt was painted flat black and the magnesium pulleys uh, were uh, finished and then the fuel pump is silver and the oil filter was painted orange. Now here's the completed engine from the right side and note there's no tensioner on the blower belt and there's no butterfly detail in the air scoop so uh, we're going to ad hoc uh, a, a repair to that. Now this uh, you know blower belt it's got a tensioner on it and it's from my parts box I don't know where it came from most everybody has them in their parts box but it's for demonstration only. Check your parts box if you want this uh, box if you want the, this detail on your build. Next you can gather up the parts for the rear end and the scatter shield with the clutch pedal and the parts for the rear end then are painted uh, a gloss red uh, same as the motor block. Now while test fitting the, um, the rear end here you'll see that I opened up the top side of the um, axle shaft um, because it just wouldn't close over over the rear end and so um, I had to take and, and go with uh, uh, that you see the the red arrow with just a little more of an opening and I just carved it out with an exacto knife and you'll need to test fit the rear end housing in the chassis to see how much to enlarge the holes for those shafts. Now here you see parts for the um, the chassis and frame and this is where the rubber hits the road on dragster models. Um, the best way to do this is to attach the cross members to one side let it dry make sure they're perpendicular and then attach the other side making sure everything is square. Now the handbrake and accelerator pedal attached to the right side of the chassis and it'll be easier to scrape the paint where the suspension parts will glue on before assembling the chassis. So uh, any chrome or paint from the uh, parts there will need to be removed before you try to assemble it. Now you can uh, insert the um, uh, you know the other part of the uh, rear end and the clutch housings into place. Uh, on the right side or left side whichever you started with and then uh, go ahead and enclose the rest of the chassis frame around it. And now here we're going to gather up uh, some of the parts and things are starting to come together as you can see. Uh, we're going to add the seat and then the roll bar. The steering parts and the fuel tank are next. Now once everything's assembled uh, the bottom of the body then attaches to the bottom of the chassis. And you can see the colors that were chosen here. Um, seat belts are red with a little a highlighter. Uh, the, there's a steel rod for the steering uh, and linkage. The, um, the steering wheel is red and so is the U-shaped uh, frame uh, rail, the, uh, you know, the roll bar there. Uh, so gather these pits, put, uh, parts, put them together. Uh, and uh, if you need more information, you can consult that uh, instruction sheet in the back. Now the body is multi-piece. And the way it's installed on the chassis, it can't be puttied in to fill the seams. So it has to be painted before it's installed. Now the upper seams are kind of hidden under decals. And with little care, they don't show too much of them. And the seams on the side do show. So just use some care when you're gluing the body together. And so you see those parts installed here. The uh, roll bar, of course, sticks way up on top. That's the high point of the model. And there's... Um, the lower body and the fuel tank and the uh, steering components are now all glued into position. Next we'll locate and add the uh, front axle, uh, the tie rod and the steering rods. And uh, these rods are very fragile. There's very small gluing points. Be careful when you're cutting them loose from the parts tree so that you don't break them off. Um, you may also find if you carefully scrape any uh, plating or paint from them uh, that a little bit of super glue might help here if uh, you need to make them stick before they actually set in place. And now you see those parts assembled here and this is their configuration uh, after gluing them into the body. 
Now scrape your gluing points before you do this, but uh, go ahead and um, you know wiggle your rear axle into position there just in fr front of the seat. At this point, I deviated from the instructions uh, because the decals here will be easier to apply if the suspension locating bars and the drag, drag link are left off until a little bit later. Now it's time to locate the uh, mounting points for the motor and uh, both on the chassis and on the engine and uh, scrape that paint there and the engine and the fuel line then can be put into place. But leave the headers off until after the decals are applied later on. And you see the rear halves of the body have been slid over the rear axle and glued together. The rear body is not glued to the chassis. Um, the rear axles uh, are located here uh, and they just put the uh, parts into position trapping them. So you'll see this better in uh, some more picks later on. Now it's time to uh, assemble the wheels and tires and you see here the parts for the rear brakes and the wheels and tires. Uh, the fronts and the backs are painted uh, magnesium uh, we talked about earlier. The brakes are silver with aluminum brake calipers and the wheel fronts and the backs are glued together uh, with the locating discs and they're trapped between the two. And if you don't want the model to roll just glue the locating disc to the wheels. Now here's a tip. Um, if you leave the front and rear wheels and tires off until after you've applied the decals to the body, uh, you can still slip them on and it's easier to locate the decals. Uh, but you can put those on, wheels and tires on later, right, just by gluing them into position. It, so here's the issue uh, the Red Arrows point out that we talked about earlier. There are Goodyear sponsor decals here. And some versions of the uh, Ram Charger rail had Goodyear tires, but this one comes with uh, Racemaster slicks. Um, so <laughs> your issue is to turn them around so the lettering doesn't show, and you may even uh, want to uh, paint that uh, side of the uh, tire a flat black or something. But if you've got some Goodyear slicks about the same size, you could use those, or you can um, simply add some aftermarket decals to those. Uh, they have to be about the same diameter and size because the slicks are uh, they're pretty narrow uh, uh, positioning there. Here you see that I've applied the uh, option one decals for this body build. Now they go on easily. There's really nothing in the way, way you know. But they use some setting solution on the long stripes, and note the uh, decals that cover the seams on the body, uh, on the top of the rear body there. Um, they hide that somewhat. Now the front has seams on the side. And be careful, um, you know, to assemble these and minimize the seams. But as uh, the body panels had to be painted first, you really can't fill them after this. Uh, so uh, go ahead and install your decals. Use some setting solution that's on stripes and plenty of warm water when you apply them to the body. After those decals are thoroughly dried, uh, you can add the uh, front suspension bars, the steering drag link, and the headers and the wheels can be uh, put into place. And now the drag chute, chute in the back there was painted flat black and after it's dry you can apply that to the rear end. Now paint the base of the windscreen with some aluminum uh, and then after that's dried attach it to the cowl uh, with some white glue or clear cement. And so here I got a little inventive. I sliced some toothpicks, round toothpicks and glued them to the front uh, after painting them red to, uh, of the blower to uh, simulate some butterfly flaps. And so here are the parts that you'll have left over from the kit and the decals. Uh, unless you use option 2 decals, then you'll have different ones that are left over. Well, there you have it. Your gorgeous looking candy stripe Ram Chargers rail has now um, uh, gained the notoriety of being uh, a head looker on your shelf. And um, as you can see, it's a, it's a real beauty. Um, and it's really not that hard except for some of the fragile uh, frame parts, etc. You can also add a little detailing to really enhance the look of your model. Uh, and it doesn't really take much. Now, it really, uh, pretty much other than the frame, assembles pretty easily. Most of the locating points are pretty obvious. Uh, and um, you just got to make sure to scrape the paint and glue. Uh, uh, paint and uh, chrome to glue the parts into position. But uh, when she's finished, as you can see here, you can scuff up the tires a little bit for some more detail. And there's a lot of things you can do to make this a real head turner. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf.
Well, we hope you like this premium scale model kit review and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. And you could find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.